In today's video, we've got a few fun experiments to see what happens when we burn things in liquid oxygen. Guys, in a previous video, you saw us try to burn diamonds, and we succeeded, and we had the help of Alexander. Alexander is with us again. He's our go-to <laughs> science guy who also tells us, like, oh, you'll blow the house up if you try that. So he kind of keeps us in check while also encouraging us to do more fun stuff. It's just the kind of influence we like to have around. He tells us how to safely do dangerous things. Uh, for those who may not remember you, what are, what are you studying these days? I'm studying metallurgical engineering and I'm almost done with my degree and then hopefully going to graduate school. In, in what was that? The, the nuclear, uh, nuclear engineering? Nuclear engineering or material science engineering. So totally he knows normal. a lot of things, uh, which is why we like to have him around. <laughs> And he's the one who sort of introduced us to this idea, so we wanted to have him on the show to show us some of his favorite things to put in liquid oxygen. Let's get started. Here's the basic idea. We've got liquid oxygen, and we've got a few different things that should burn fairly well, and we want to see if we can make them burn really well by immersing them in liquid oxygen. So we've got oxygen flowing into this coil right now, and pretty soon, right then, we're going to get a little stream of liquid oxygen coming out the other end. So we're just going to wait for this cup to fill up and then we can do some fun experiments. Okay, the first recipe we call for about a cup of liquid oxygen and a graham cracker. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so we've got this graham cracker very thoroughly uh, marinated, for lack of a better word, <laughs> in the liquid oxygen. We're going to put it down on the concrete and then, Nate, would you do the... Uh... Bake at 3,000 for, yeah. <laughs> for five seconds. I'm already thrilled. In case you're curious, that is not how normal graham crackers burn. Should we have a side-by-side -side for comparison? We can, we Holy can... cow, the heat that that puts off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Here's how normal graham crackers burn. They don't. <laughs> I mean, it, it burned as long as the torch was, it's probably possible to actually light it on fire. I don't think that's fire. a burn, I think that's a char. Let's get our grams out. All right, here is one graham cracker. And I hear we have a marshmallow. As it sizzles. That's just how I like my s'mores. I'm thrilled. Mmm, oxygen-y. So this is the control. About half of this, probably more like two-thirds of this cracker is soaked in liquid oxygen and the other uh, third is not. So you can see that that half is very rapidly burning and then probably when it gets to about that boundary it'll stop burning quite as vigorously. There we go. So you can see that once all of the liquid oxygen has burned away, the cracker is significantly less flammable and uh, behaves, you know, like a graham cracker. I should also point out that the reason this is working so well is the uh, reaction that we would commonly call burning is really just a disguised chemical reaction. Um, it's very high speed and high energy oxidation. So when we add more oxygen, it happens faster, and when it happens faster, it can uh, go more completely and give us a lot more energy. So obviously, soaking graham crackers in liquid oxygen and lighting them off wasn't dangerous enough, so... Let's try some sparklers. This seems like a great idea. All right, so since we're not exactly sure what this is going to do, what kind of reaction it's uh, going to have when we put it in the liquid oxygen, we want to make sure that we're being as safe as we can be within reason. So since these have a little steel stem on them, we just took a scrap piece of 2x4 and a magnet, and if we stick it on the end, you can see that we can kind of suspend this, and then we can be as far away as this piece of uh, wood allows us to be, and still have the desired reaction. So, sparkler is burning. Let's just gently... <laughs> I 
broken oh, glass. Oh, there goes the cup. Doesn't seem to make much difference wow. to it, honestly. No, it's not really having much of an effect one way or the other. It's just breaking the cup. It, it, it's breaking the cup, but it also, uh, it, it tainted our liquid oxygen. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks like, am I crazy or was that longer? Do you see the little beads of molten metal there? I think it actually melted the stick. Here was uh, one that burned without that. Wow. So we've, there we we've go. lost so, a significant amount of the, the little handle on it. We've done this several times now. Well, not this particular thing, but we've dropped lots of different things into the liquid oxygen in one of these cups. This cup is just shattered to bits. All right, cotton burns. Everybody knows that. This is a piece of cotton cloth. So for a control test, yeah, it's, it's on fire. There you go. So that's how a normal piece of uh, cotton cloth would burn. So your t-shirt, that's how that would burn. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Woo, there we go. Huh, and then just all went up at once. <gasps> Woo. Yeah. Very short, high intensity reaction. Yeah, not a long lifespan there, but really cool. This time we're just gonna get this burning. We're gonna have liquid oxygen in the glass. We're gonna get this burning and just drop it in. <laughs> And it's gone. Very nice. It's just gone. Yeah. Oh, Holy that makes cow. me so happy. There is <laughs> nothing left. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is a very similar setup to what we did before with the sparkler. Steel wool also reacts very well with oxygen. If you've ever put a nine volt battery on it, lit a small amount on fire and then blown on it, you know that the more air you supply to it, the faster it burns. So our question is, what's going to happen if we put it in an environment that is 100% oxygen? So again, since we're not exactly sure what this is going to do and we suspect it's going to be quite energetic, we are going to take this and since it is magnetic, use our little magnet jig here and just pull it. It'll fall into that bowl full of liquid oxygen after it's been lit on fire and hopefully we will get a very exciting result. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> Goodbye, bull. Look at all of the little bits of molten metal that it's coalesced on the bowl. That bowl has given up. All right, so Alex, what's the next plan? Well, the next plan is we're going to scale it up a little bit. So we've previously been doing just maybe a few tens of grams of this steel wool here, and we're going to do two entire pads of it. So <laughs> according to my oh, no. um, preliminary calculations, this should release approximately the same amount of energy that's required to light a standard light bulb for 40 minutes and we're going to be doing that in a very short period of time. So we're expecting this to be very energetic. We're going to use the magnet rig, but since it's a little bit windy out here, we've modified it. So instead we're just going to lower it in on a string, but I'll still be back in safety and we should get some really nice uh, footage of the reaction. And, and this cup is ceramic, not yes. styrofoam. Yeah, so hopefully it will last for long enough for all of the steel to react. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> Oh, there's a puddle of liquid oh, metal. Oh, nice. Is what? that just liquid steel? That's Holy just steel. Cow. That is so much better than I had hoped. Oh.
All right, so one thing that I've always heard as kind of a danger of liquid oxygen is, and this is true, it makes everything extremely flammable. One of the common anecdotes that they use is, let's say you're pouring it in a room with carpet and a little bit spills on the floor, and then there's a static shock, the carpet might ignite and burn very rapidly. I've never actually seen that done. I believe that carpet will become extremely flammable with liquid oxygen, but I actually have a little test square of carpet here that I would like to uh, see if that anecdote is true. So let's give it a try. So after some careful consideration, we've decided that since this is made of polyester, it's probably going to have a much more energetic reaction even than all the other experiments we've done. For that reason, we are going to use the sparkler on the end of this PVC pole to ignite it, and that way we will be a safe distance away from any uh, explosions which may occur. So I'm gonna light the sparkler, and then I'm very quickly gonna start pouring liquid oxygen over the carpet square, then I'll back a good ways away, at which point Alexander will, uh, will prod the oxygen-soaked carpet square with the sparkler. And I'll be over here. Far. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> There's no carpet left. <laughs> All that's that's instant. left is the backing on the carpet. Which apparently what? is not made of the same material as the rest of the carpet. Wow, that was, um, that was, awesome. that was amazing. <laughs> that was rather energetic. <laughs> As it turns out, the uh, anecdote is true. If you pour liquid oxygen on uh, carpet, it becomes extremely, extremely flammable. I don't think that even classifies as flammable. That might, that might even be explosive. explosive. All right, that was, <laughs> that was so cool. A million thanks again to Alexander and to Kuma Films for Thank those unbelievable slow-mo shots. It looks so good. Oh. Guys, Kuma Films got some cool stuff. Go check out their channel. They yep. look beautiful. Guys, thanks for watching. Click up there to check out our most recent video. Team Rocket, blasting off again.